Well, this is the worst year of the pandemic. You might not think so, but it is in terms of number of cases and number of deaths. And at, at various points, the number of deaths, they seem to be moving around a little bit, maybe going down a little bit at the moment, but every 14 days or 16 days, it's the equivalent of a 737 crash. So it's a lot of people dying of COVID. And they've just changed, they're changing the way they report. They're going to stop reporting COVID deaths. OK, so there's more deaths that, that many deaths, that's a lot of deaths, the worst year, yet we're not reporting the numbers in the same way, we're not focusing on the numbers in the same way. Does that suggest the community's not worried about it in the same way and therefore it's unlikely to be any kind of factor in the election? Wasn't a couple of months ago we were talking about the election could be a referendum on the pandemic? Well, it may be partly a referendum on the pandemic. I think that the, the immediate effect is that the, the uh, population the public are fed up. They're fed up with lockdown, masks and everything else, and they're tired of it. If you look at the 1918 flu pandemic, 1920 was the worst year for the same reason. People stopped wearing their masks, were getting fed up with it, and it was a bad year. And we were going through a bad year. I think the political implications of COVID are not so much what's happening now, although if it, something bad happened, it could make it have an impact. But what's likely to happen is there'll be a lull towards the end of April into the election period, and the, there won't be very much COVID around at that point. What the, the problem for the government is that traditionally, regardless of the colour of the government, um, pandemics and crises have not been good for incumbents when the crises have passed. Churchill lost power in the Second World War. Um, the, after the 1918 pandemic, lots of governments changed. You've seen uh, the situation in South Australia, uh, Premier Goodwin uh, re resigning. And it's likely that people remember what happened before, and that's the, it's the lingering memory that I think might have a political impact. I think the government's banking on what it sees as its good news, its good news message, that Australia has one of the highest vaccination rates in the world, Australia has one of the lowest death rates in the world from COVID, uh, Australia's economy has bounced back, one of the quickest uh, recovering economies in the world after COVID. And I, I think they're feeling pretty good about that message getting through to the public. Do you think the public's receiving that message? It's, it's hard to know. I, th I think people have just moved on and feeling tired. But if you're a parent of a young kid and you've had that child's been sent home and you've been on homeschooling and that's not receiving publicity and a lot of parents are losing time at work and looking after their children, I think young parents are seeing the impact and probably grandparents as well. So there is an undercurrent going on at the moment, which is having an impact and not being fully reported. So I'm not sure that the mood in the community is as good as, it, as the politicians hope that it, that it would be. Yeah, we have done well. Um, certain things have fallen apart, but you know, there are people at the moment still suffering. So we're heading into an election campaign, minimal restrictions really in all states now with COVID. How vulnerable are Australians to reinfection and how might that play into a campaign? Look, the, the BA2 surge has been quite considerable and a lot, a lot of people have been infected. So if the only thing around is Omicron, so either BA1 or BA2, you might see a surge going into winter, but it's unlikely you'll see another rise before the election unless a new variant comes in. And even if a new... And what are the chances of that? What's the new variant? It's the unpredictable. Horizon? You just don't know. Somebody gets off a plane with a new variant. But even if a new variant came in, unless it was super contagious, well, it will be super contagious to actually muscle out the others, it's unlikely to have a huge impact before the election, but there will be worries about it. This is just totally unpredictable. The pandemic is not over and we need to be highly vigilant. And what's important politically is I think the decision announced by the Chief Health Medical Officer, Paul Kelly, the other day to stop reporting COVID deaths. It's just too much of a coincidence that that's coming out two or three days before the announcement of an election where you're not going to get reporting of COVID deaths. You're going to get reporting of excess mortality, which might in the long run be the right thing. So in other words, how many people added people are dying in the community that wouldn't otherwise... How many otherwise more people than usual? Than usual. Um, but to be stopping reporting, what, what, what actually winds people up is the reporting on a daily basis. And I suspect the government finds it convenient not to be reporting on daily COVID deaths.